things to look out for signs of someone with cerebral narcissism, a cerebral narcissist. I am Lisa Colucci. If you need any help or information, check out the info in the main description of every video. There are links there for coaching and group coaching as well if you need it. Otherwise, so a cerebral narcissist is a person who needs to be intellectually superior to everyone around them. They don't only need to be, they 100% believe they are intellectually superior to everyone around them. They are generally highly intelligent people or have an intelligence for a specific topic or a certain, you know, niche intelligence, so to speak. So they can build on that to aggrandize their own worth and value over other people's. They can often act philosophically ideal. They, they can be idealists in their specific own morality, if that makes sense. They will undermine and demean other people's success in order to feel superior, in order to prove their own superiority. They are arrogant. They believe they need to share their gift of intelligence with everyone else in the world. They are in the love bombing stage or phase where they're not putting you down. They will often build the person up, build you up, put you on a pedestal that equals them. You know they're intelligent. And so they're saying, oh yes, only we understand this. We, they'll include you as part of the intelligence for a while. Just wait, because when they devalue, you will be made to feel like the most unintelligent human being on the planet. They are intellectually competitive. They hate conflict and will avoid it through using intellectual means, using words or shutting down and not talking or being smug and superior so that they don't have to have a conversation. Emotionally, they are very non-intelligent. They're emotionally shut down, emotionally distant, emotionally childlike, tantrums, uh, behaviors that are, you know, outbursts of emotional dysregulation. They have a very, very fragile ego. They cannot take any constructive criticism. They are highly controlling. They have a very tit for tat exchange and everything is transactionary. They will withhold and remove any attention or affection and then tell you that you're clingy or needing too much. They can be belittling and very rude to other people and especially you if you are with them. And here's you trying to be perfect in their eyes. You're trying to meet the expectation that they set for you is by devaluing you. In other words, they've built you up before and that's that that's where they expect you to be. Then they knock you down and you spend your time trying to get yourself back into the position of being equal to them or, or at least close, right? They will use their intelligence and their mind to prove their uniqueness. They will talk about it often. They can often be quite grandiose with this and very and overt with this, um, talking about how unique and special and intelligent and in innovative and inventive and their intimate life um, can be non-existent or very brief or on their basically on their terms not very close and cuddly they value intelligence over heart in fact they they will diminish heart they will diminish empathy i knew of one who was a decent enough, fine enough person to be around as long as you weren't married to them, right? And if you had a conversation where you had an exchange that showed you were understanding someone on an empathic level or had any intuition or any um, intuitive understanding or awareness of anything, they would diminish it and say there's no such thing. Outwardly say what you're saying is nonsense. You cannot feel or understand or even begin to put yourself in the place of another person. There's no such thing that is made up. So yeah, they will berate you in arguments. They will tear you down because they have the words, they have the intelligence, they have fast minds, and they have a one track mind that doesn't allow for other people to have any position within any discussion. So it's their way and they will knock you down on their way to proving it's their way. They, oddly enough, seem drawn to emotionally intelligent empaths. I think emotionally intelligent empaths see their intellectual person as two things. They see it as, well, if they have intellectual intelligence, they must also have this great emotional intelligence. Because remember, in the beginning, they're not going to show you all the ugly stuff. They're going to seem to have some level of emotional intelligence because they can speak about it. 
but they can't do it in action, right? They can't function. They can't put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. Okay. And the other thing is what a relief as a highly empathic person to be around someone who doesn't have a whole lot of emotional stuff coming at you all the time. So in the beginning, it can feel refreshing to be around a person like this for some, for some people who, who are attracted to it, um, attracted to them. Okay. They will use your words against you by attaching meaning to a portion of what you say. And then because of their ability to speak intellectually and intelligently gaslight you and twist your words using your words against you so you can be super confused and like literally befuddled when speaking with them in, in any form of conflict. They can also tend to be kind of snubbing of other people, obviously, because they are so much more superior in every way, right? According to them. Anyway, th 